Well, good evening, everyone. We are uh, going to be continuing our Gifts of the Holy Spirit teaching that we started uh, a few weeks back there. Uh, we're teaching on the gifts of the Holy Spirit as found in the book of the Corinthians. And uh, we start here uh, with the nine gifts of the Spirit. We understand that there are nine gifts, and the first uh, three gifts are called utterance gifts. And we covered those, I think, fairly well. We talked about uh, the tongues, we talked about interpretation of tongues, and we talked about prophecy. And so God wants us to be able to operate in these three utterance gifts. The second group of giftings is the revelation gifts. God wants to be able to use us and give us words of knowledge, words of wisdom, and also to have the gift of the discerning of spirits in operation, which we've covered as well. And then thirdly, there's the power gifts. The power gifts contain the gift of faith, working of miracles, and the gift of healing. And so these three gifts are very important as well. We're not going to spend as much time on these because uh, like the other gifts, but more so with these, it's caught, it's not taught. This is something that you develop in as you spend time with God, as you draw close to the heart of God, God begins to use you in these gifts. You can't teach them, they're gifts. They're given and God allows us to have them when he feels we're mature enough to operate in them. See, God cares about us. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm not going to give my kid, you know, uh, the keys to my car until I know they're able to handle it. And it's the same way uh, with us as believers. Um, we have to be of age, maturity, to be able to handle the gifts in our lives. And God releases them severally as he wills uh, when he feels that we're prepared and we're able to use them without hurting ourselves. All right? So you can't really teach the gifts. Uh, you have to catch them uh, by spending time in relationship with God. And so today we want to talk about the power gifts. Now, the power gifts are important. Uh, they're just as important as the other gifts. And God uses them again uh, as he feels uh, fit to give them to us for the purpose of edifying and building up the body of Christ and to bring evidence uh, of his existence uh, in, in a world that is lost without him. And so we're going to look at this here. The first one is the gift of faith. So this is the power gifts, the gift of faith. Um, this is a supernatural faith. This is a supernatural faith, um, believing for the impossible to come to pass. I always call this uh, the God kind of faith. It's when God drops his confidence in you supernaturally, uh, and you just have a, a confidence of it's going to happen now. There, there's a faith that is not your own. It's a gift and it's imparted in you. I had this experience uh, a few times. One of the times I had it was here at the crossroads. 18 years ago, we were on the other side. We we're having a service and we had just finished worship. And I had this feeling that came into me that was so real. I just knew that God's going to heal someone right now. And it just like, it's like I knew it like I know I'm saved. It was so solid in my spirit. And then what came out of my mouth was what God put in my spirit. And I said, the first person who stands up, God's going to heal. And what I saw was people started doing this. They're looking around like, what's going on? But there was a few people in the audience that were, their eyes got big. And this one lady, she her eyes got big and she jumped up and she goes, I'm the first one up, right? And, and, and I just said, you know, I said, come on up. And so she ran up, found, kind of felt like the price is right. And I laid hands on her and God healed her powerfully that night. He touched her. Uh, and, and it was a gift of faith that dropped into my spirit. Um, this isn't something you can, you know, work up. This is something that's given. It's a gift and it comes upon you. Um, the gift of faith is distinct uh, from the working of miracles. It's a little bit different. You need to understand there's four kinds of faith. So the first kind of faith is what we call saving faith. That's when you put your faith in Jesus Christ. And so the saving faith saves us from our sins. We put our faith and confidence in the Lord. The second faith is faithfulness. And that's when we become doers of the word, not hearers only. It's when you hear a truth and you're obedient and you walk in it. You take care of widows and orphans in their distress and you keep yourself unspotted from the world and you serve in the local church and you're faithful to God. There's faith that makes you faithful. Okay, so that's the second type of faith. Um, the third one is natural faith. 
Now, natural faith is something that is developed. You know, when I first married my wife, um, I was, you know, a little bit, you know, I knew she loved me and I loved her, but, you know, uh, I, I, there's always in the back of my mind, well, what if she's interested in somebody else? Or, you know, what if she's not always faithful to me? And, and, and there's that doubt. But as I developed my relationship with her and I, I saw that she loved me and um, I, I began to trust her and begin to have faith in her because of our relationship that I never thought that way anymore. There was a natural faith that developed from me knowing her character. And that's the kind of faith we have to have in God, that his character is there. He loves us and he cares for us. And that's natural faith. It's developed by relationship and by walking in truth with someone and even with the Lord. And then there's the fourth one is trusting faith. Now, trusting faith is different. This is a faith that if God said it, it's going to happen. If God said it, it's the truth. Uh, it's a different type of faith because it's not based on relationship. It's based on authority. You know, if somebody says something, it's their, their, their word is as good as gold. And this is a type of faith that God wants us to operate in. We have to have growing natural faith. We do. But we have to have trusting faith. And when you get to that place in trusting, it's more important than how you feel. Uh, it's more important than the doctor's report. There's that trusting God's word to be more foundational than anything else. And this, okay, we're going to go to Mark chapter 11, verse 12. So Jesus is with his disciples. I want you to see what happens here in verse 12. Now, the next day when they had come out from Bethany, he was hungry. And seeing from afar a fig tree having leaves, he went to see if perhaps he would find something on it. Okay. And when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves. Okay. For it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, look what he said. Let no one eat fruit from you ever again. And his disciples heard it. That's what the scripture says. They heard what he said. Now let's go down to verse 20. Because Jesus was giving them, a, this is a teaching moment for the Lord. Now look what he says here in verse 20. Now in the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree which you cursed has withered away. You know, look, Master, you cursed something, and it actually obeyed you and died. And they were fascinated by this. And Jesus answered and said to them, first thing he said, have faith in God. This is that trusting faith, okay? Have faith in God, for assuredly I say to you, whoever says of this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, Okay. but believes that those things which he says will be done, he shall have whatever thing he says. Okay, so, God, so Jesus is saying, you have power in your words. If you can discern in your spirit what God's will is in a situation, whether it's healing, whether it's prosperity, whether it's the salvation of a loved one, and you feel God's will for it in your life, you can declare it, and if you believe it, what you say can come to pass. This, this is not positive thinking. This isn't name it and claim it. This is literally declaring the will of God because his word has power to bring transformation. This, this is the key. You need to get this so important. Okay. And it always has to be in accordance with his word. So when we declare of ourselves, by Jesus' stripes and wounds, I am healed, you're declaring that you're, he you're declaring God's truth, which has power to bring change, see? And, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. Because faith is always right now. Faith is now. It's never in the future, okay? Now, therefore, therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask for when you pray, whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you will receive them, and you will have them. So when you ask for something, it, first of all, it should be in accordance with his will. Whatever things you ask for when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have 
them, okay? And then he gives us a condition in verse 25. He says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him that your father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses, okay? But if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive you. He's basically saying, make sure you're right with God. Make sure you forgive people. Make sure your heart is right. But I'm telling you, Jesus is saying, you have authority to change things, not with your word, but with my word. When you speak God's word, that God has spoken to your spirit, it has the power to change situations, okay? I've seen this in my life. When I, when I declare God's word over my body, when I declare God's word over my finances, when I declare God's word over a situation, I have seen transformation take place. When we talk, Jesus talks about mountains here. He's speaking figuratively about mountains represent problems in your life. Things that get in the way of the will of God for your life and you can speak to those mountains and they will be removed if you have trusting faith and you believe God. All right? So let's turn to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now I want you to see this. It says, the writer of Hebrews says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. That word substance is like the word title deed. Okay? So when you purchase a home, you, you go in and you sign the deed, you sign the title deed, you sign the, the agreement. At the moment you sign that and a deposit is put down, that home is yours. You begin to rejoice. You begin to thank God. You begin to, you know, call your friends, say, I just purchased a house. But listen, the closing date isn't going to be for a couple months. But you rejoice at the moment that you get the title deed because you know it's yours, even though you haven't taken possession of it. This is what faith is. Faith is the title deed of the things not seen. So the healing that I've not seen in my life, the financial prosperity I've not seen in my life, the salvation of my loved ones that I have not yet seen come to pass. I have a title deed called God's word. And I, and I believe and I trust that it's already mine. Their salvation is mine. The healing already belongs to me. The financial blessing already belongs to me. Why? Because the title deed, it, 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 it's solidified. I already own it, even if I don't see it. And that's what faith is. All right? Faith is the title deed of the things that we hope for. The evidence of things not seen. For by faith, the elders obtained a good testimony. And so faith is important. Faith is now. Okay? And faith never stops being now. Faith is always now. I'm healed now. You know, I'm blessed now. Salvation is now. So faith moves things because it's in the now. Okay, hope is always in the future. Hope is always in the future. And so we need to give substance to hope. How do we give substance to hope? We, we apply our faith. We hold out the title deed of the word of God and we declare, if God's word declares it, then it's done. Okay, so let it be written, so let it be done. And that's what we need God to do in us is, is to supernaturally join his faith with our faith so we can believe for miracles in the lives of our loved ones and in, in the life of our church, okay? Faith is a deep conviction that God cannot lie, okay? Faith always works and fear is the opposite of faith. Okay, uh, fear activates Satan, faith activates God. And so we live by faith. How many here live by faith? So we live by faith, we have our life by faith. And so I wanna say this because a lot of times what I've done in the past, and I know we're all guilty, but sometimes we pray in hope. Well, I pray God that you will heal me. I pray God that you will change my situation. I pray that, that somehow, Lord, some way God, my, uh, my son will get saved or my daughter will meet someone who might convince her that Jesus is real. And I just pray God that, and, and there's nothing wrong with hoping, but, but there's a whole nother level. If when we begin to say, God, I thank you, Lord, that you said in your word that me and my household will serve the Lord. And I thank you, God, right now that you sending forth ministering angels to go to minister to my daughter, to my son. You're going to send the right people into their path because God, it's your desire that they be saved. I thank you. Just like Noah got on the ark with his family, God, that I'm going to get 
on the ark with my family. And I don't care if you have to give them dreams, if you have to clothesline them off their motorcycle like you did with Paul and his donkey. I don't care what you have to do, God, but I thank you, God, that you're going to do it because your word says that you're going to bless my children and there's going to be a great inheritance. And you begin to talk this way because you let your spirit prophesy what the word of the Lord says. And when you start to tell your body, you know what, you're healed. And I don't care if the doctor said you have arthritis. The word of God says that you're healed by his stripes and wounds. So God, I thank you that even though I get up every morning with this pain, I thank you, God, that my body is under construction because your word declares I'm healed. And you begin to prophesy the word of the Lord, which has power to change your life. And so faith, first of all, we need to... Uh, get get rid of the one thing that comes against faith is a religious spirit and I grew up and a lot of my foundation as a believer in my household was through the word of faith movement and unfortunately there is error in some of the teaching there's some extremes in the teaching and every movement has a little bit of extreme here and there uh, but people throw the baby out with the bathwater. Because of the foundation of word of faith, uh, there's been, I've lived a life and I've seen miracles, I've seen transformations in my life. Do not throw the baby out with the bathwater. Uh, don't live under Satan's yoke. Don't be under his bondage because, because you don't want to accept the faith teaching. It has the power to change your life, I promise you, if you grab it in the right balance. Amen? And so that is the working of the gift of faith in your life. So important. Um, and the more you start to believe God, the more he'll deposit his faith in you. So your assignment today as a group, uh, if you could go in your Bibles to Mark chapter 11, uh, and you can start in verse 20 and go right up to 24. You can cover verse 25 if you'd like in 26, but Mark 11, 20. Um, yes, yeah, so let's say Mark 11, 20 to 20. Six and just really discuss uh, the lesson of the withered fig tree and how it can relate to our life and have some time of study. And then also, if you have time, you can go to Hebrews chapter 11, which is uh, the faith chapter, and start in verse 1 and go straight through to um, the end of um, verse 12, the end of verse 12. So Hebrews chapter 11, 1 to 12, and take some time to discuss what each of these people of faith had in common that made them effective uh, in their ministry. And so I want you to look at that together, study together, let the Holy Spirit lead you, uh, challenge your, your, your faith and challenge your thinking uh, as you're studying this, and then have a time of prayer and ministry together, okay? God bless you. I hope you guys have a great time together uh, in the Holy Spirit. Love you.